Welcome to Bridge the Gap with hosts Lucas McCurdy and Joshua Crisp, a podcast dedicated to informing, educating, and influencing the future of housing and services for seniors. Powered by Markenta. So welcome to Bridge the Gap podcast. We are really excited today. And I just, uh, sorry I'm chuckling right now for our, our audience that, that are not being able to watch this on YouTube. Josh, my special co-host, has a beautiful um, an AI cat That's sitting exactly in his right. lab that is just really soaking up his energy at this very moment. And so <laughs> we, this is a, the first time that we've ever had a, an animal on the podcast. And so, and I'm not talking about Lisa Sinney. Ah. <laughs> so we're very excited to have Lisa Sinney on our show today. Hello, Lisa. Hello. Thank you very yes. much. And hi, everybody. YouTube land, yes. Facebook. Lisa's very active on social. So we're going to kind of merge networks and leverage each other. And we're going to get out. Exactly. <laughs> get it out to everybody and make your cat famous. So, so um, Josh, how do you feel right now with this lovely cat? Uh, to be honest, totally uncomfortable. I mean, so I'm not exactly, uh, I don't want to ruin some of our fans, burst their bubbles. I'm not a big cat lover. You, I'm actually really? allergic to cats. So am I. So you I feel like a cat guy. Look, the cat loves you I don't though. know if this thing has cat dander in no. it or not, but I almost feel like I'm breaking out in hives no, right now. No, it doesn't see that. Okay. Tell, yeah, see, no. it's, it's rolled over looking at me. For those of you that can't see this, I touched its head. It rolled over and looked at me. It's purring and there's some weird vibration going on it, so yeah yeah, yeah. well it likes you yeah I, I guess so it's strangely it's, it's like a normal lively. cat that if you're allergic to it they often want to come up and you know pet you and do things and <laughs> annoy you kind of thing well this is the most uncomfortable show i've ever had so far but we're gonna this get is through the this. best show we've ever yeah. had For in me, my opinion i think it's fantastic i'm lisa glad. and i think yeah. this is the best so I do. i'm glad I i'm do. doing this for you guys <laughs> well, that, for the team that's terrific. so lisa tell what what what's up with this so this cat is from hasbro the um toy company and it's called a companion cat so my grandmother lived with us during this last three and a half years during a social experiment we had four generations in one house she has dementia and um, at a certain point our animals started to ignore her and this cat would not ignore her it would sit and it would talk to her it couldn't run away it didn't need <laughs> fed didn't need taken out so it's a perfect companion Incredible, incredible. So um, is this a, a new product that is just being launched out? Has it had trial runs in actual uh, memory care communities? It has. It's, it's used in tons of memory care communities, and we're just hoping that people, if they have somebody, um, a loved one, a parent that might be at home and their, their spouse is taking care of them, it's a really helpful tool. <laughs> It's amazingly distracting. <laughs> it is very much so. So I'm sure this is coming through on the audio. All these meowing I and hope the purring. So. <laughs> if not, you're really missing out. You are. There is out. a mute button, so I have to say they also have a dog. The dog's a little yippy. Um, you can also mute it. Uh, mm. I think the, the only thing that ever scared me was I came downstairs and I forgot that we had a robot cat mm -hmm. and it meowed at me. And then <laughs> I was like, what's going on? That it's, would do it. You know, that kind of thing. Okay, so Lisa, um, tell us a little bit about your background and what sure. got you interested in design and then specifically, how did that parlay over into working with seniors? Sure, so I, uh, I'm an interior designer and I did healthcare design, was brought up in the hospital and then started to realize that I wanted to impact people's lives more. And I was only hitting probably three to six days for people staying in the hospital. So moved into senior living and was in-house at a company called Carrington with a K. Okay. We did them all over the country and then they were sold. We actually went public. They were sold in the, that was 20 years ago this year. And the owners asked me to start my own company. Interesting. So now I've been blessed to work all over the country with all kinds of great clients and see what works and doesn't work. And matter of fact, in North America and China, and have a lot of fun with it. And then I'm very passionate about technology and how it can impact our lives, especially lives of seniors and make it better. Absolutely, well, and uh, so what's it like working with your husband, Greg? Well, um, <laughs> He's not going to listen to this, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it, gosh, knows it took him forever to read the book, you know? <laughs> so, um, you know, it's just like uh, anything, you know, I, you know, being with your family, when you're an entrepreneur, it's a 24-7 yes. kind of thing. And so talking about it and living with it, um, it really isn't that much different. We, having 
my mom and dad and grandma and then the kids growing up and us all experimenting on each other, it's kind of like a living laboratory. It's no different than being at work. That was kind of the easy part. Interesting. So. so that's a great segue into what we really wanted to talk to you about is uh, the content in your book, the mm -hmm. topics in your book, uh, which, uh, you know, so run us through your life, y'all's life at home and sure. how it got to that point. Sure. So the, the first book I did was called The Future is Here, Senior Living Reimagined, How Technology Will Change the Face of Senior Living in the Next Five Years. So I, I basically talked about all the technology that was out there that was going to enter into senior living. Then when my mom and dad and my grandma um, started having some problems aging, mm -hmm. and my grandma was 90 and I thought, this woman is dancing at her 90th birthday party, you know, she's gonna last a while. So um, as the oldest daughter, I decided, and with Greg's permission and her family, to sell the house and move them into another house with us. We all, we did a small renovation, and then make it a living laboratory. Get technology, test out, talk about what failed, talk about what succeeded, and help other people. Because 90% of seniors don't wanna go into senior living, even if they can afford it. Sure. So, and for those that can't afford it, um, on the other hand, you know, I design really beautiful places. My team does a fantastic job. We're award-winning firm. My parents want nothing to do with that. So, not only was it very expensive, we have two kids in college now, but they just didn't want to go there. Interesting. So, um, what we did was the, the second book, Hive, The Simple Guide to Multi-Generational Living, really talks about the technology, the design, and then the social aspects. Mm -hmm. I had no idea, like, socially like who owns the kitchen you know what about private space um, storage whose Christmas decorations go up there's so many different things that I didn't think about um, that I think it's wise to have somebody else guiding you through that mm -hmm. and uh, kind of like the girlfriend's guide to pregnancy for multi-generational living if you think about it that way interesting and then the latest book that's getting ready to come out it came out on Kindle uh, a month ago or so and it hit number one in four countries is boom and it's about for baby boomers like how they use technology to go anywhere they want and age in place interesting that's awesome <laughs> so yeah aside from the distraction on my lap <laughs> right now i'm fascinated because the multi-generational thing is awesome thank you this is awesome you, you take some of that <laughs> but um so we were we were thinking about even with our office um instead of just having your traditional office space for a senior living operator and developer, mm -hmm. actually creating a home that seniors or multiple age people live there and that's where our office is and really doing like what you've done with your home space. So that's so inspiring. And, and I love it. I, I mean, one of the places that we did that was featured on CNN, I took the kids through there and they're like, I wanna live here. And I'm like, I know, I do too, but they won't take us. You know, we're <laughs> yeah. too young. And But as a mother and an entrepreneur of kids that were in school, I would have loved to have had, you know, the laundry done and, you know, meals and somebody to help with homework and that kind of situation. And I think we silo people too much. Right. And we need to go back to kind of European and more immigrant societies. What do you think are some of our biggest challenges that our, our industry, our, just our culture faces as we, because there's a lot of people talking about multi-generational, it's almost like becoming a buzzword now, mm -hmm. but I think there's all these challenges that people are immediately throwing up. What do you see as some of the big challenges? I think one of the biggest challenges is that Americans feel that when they have a problem, they need a pill or they need to stop doing something, mm -hmm. where the rest of the world figures out a hack around it. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I talk about in Boom is that if you looked at the x-rays and the medical records of a professional athlete, a soccer player, a baseball player, a football player, doctors would tell you if they didn't know the age and they weren't looking at you know the bone structure on that, that it was an 80 year old. Hmm. So really? professional athletes have the wear and tear on them like seniors, but they don't look and act like it. So what kind of hacks are they doing that we're not allowing our seniors to have? Mm -hmm. and that we're not adopting and it might be biohacks it could be neurohacks it could be um, the right surgery and stem cell it could be i didn't allow my parents nor my grandma not to have stairs it was wow. a big deal yeah so um i mean we kind of had some words on, at the family um with it you know not anything bad but you know they're going downhill they need to be in a ranch they need it and i said no what's the first thing a therapist is going to do he's going to make you do steps the studies show that people don't fall on steps mm -hmm. they fall because they're over medicated they're waking up in the middle of the night and they're 
drowsy, their blood pressure, there's clutter on the floor, mm -hmm. those types of things. They don't fall because of steps, and yet that's one of the number one things to get your lymph and your blood moving, which activates your brain and your digestive system and everything. It's so positive. Yeah, so um, you, you brought up falls. That's mm -hmm. a huge thing in senior living, and I've heard some statistics, as, and depending on what study you look at, in a community setting, like mm -hmm. a senior care community, it seems like about 95% of the falls happen in the resident rooms when mm -hmm. nobody's with them. Mm -hmm. Not always sure what had happened, but I think many of the factors are the main contributing factors. Living with the family and the hands on there, what are you seeing that are some things to for fall prevention that whether you're doing what you're doing and caring for people in your home mm -hmm. or senior operators and providers and designers can do to make that a safer environment. Yeah, I think sensor technology is going to be huge in this in the future. Um, being able to, it's not about Big Brother watching. So um, I always say it's not about the cloud, it's about the heart. Mm -hmm. So it's about taking that information and then data mining it and saying, you know, Martha's been up five times tonight. Maybe she has a UTI or maybe her meds are off mm -hmm. or maybe something like that is going and being preemptive sure. about it. So um, same thing with mini strokes and being able to have the right fluid. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we're going to see um, an onset of mini labs mm -hmm. in senior living sure. where, um, you know, I can go to a CVS and get more testing done than I can get in senior living, find out more about what I need, get the right things. I can even go to hydrate, which is like I go and get IVs mm -hmm. um, and be able to, I, I'm sending my mom there. But if I had to do that with a doctor, mm -hmm. I'd have to go to the ER, get it prescribed, be six months down the road. And that's that's not the way that it should be. Sure. We should be about pre preemptive you know, health versus crisis management. So the sensors and the technology so I, I know, you know, as we've talked about that, and we've not rolled it out at, at too many communities yet, just in small portions, but nothing to where I think it, it could be or should be. There's sometimes a little bit of uh, pushback from some of the adult children mm -hmm. that think this is invading mom's privacy. I see the potential benefit, but we don't know where that information is going. Right. So what, I mean, from your experience, how would, how, what's a good way to kind of uh, combat that? Well, I think you have to look at and you have to build the case that GPS is not really that much different. Mm -hmm. So would you give up, you know, GPS in your car? Sure. I wouldn't. I don't want to go back down to triple A, find a trip tick, try to get on the road, the ramp's closed. So, but they know where I'm at at any time mm -hmm. when I'm using GPS. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, any kind of data mining health monitor. I don't know if you have a Fitbit or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Anybody can get into it, but the benefits outweigh the negatives. The negatives. Hugely. Um, TSA, mm -hmm. I fly three to four days a week. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to give up flying and getting to my customers mm -hmm. because they're going to x-ray all my stuff and maybe pat me down. Sure. Um, there are just costs that I'm willing to pay. Sure. Um, to be able to have the freedom and the life that I want. The same thing with my grandma. We had a camera in her room. Lots of people freak out about that. Mm -hmm. But the deal was, was my mom was feeling like she was a prisoner. Mm -hmm. She couldn't go out. She would go to a movie or go to dinner with my father and then rush home because of grandma. And um, I said, let's put a camera up. Let's put it on her recliner. We're not going to invade her privacy in the bedroom or anything like that. But she could turn it on. If she was watching TV or sleeping, they could stay out and have a dessert. Sure. That's a win-win for everybody. Sure. And when I was sitting there with my grandma, my mom would sometimes come on and say, Lisa, what are you doing? I'd be like, where is she at? And I'm like, oh, she's in the camera. So, <laughs> you know, it was a win, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I'm hearing a lot of it, maybe just an educational piece. I that think so. We can communicate that a little bit better you know I think that's probably something we don't do great in our in our space as mm -hmm. operators um, but uh, you know hopefully even on our podcast uh, we have a diverse audience we've got consumers residents families so maybe even just hearing uh, a different side of opinion and hearing it firsthand on what you've done yep. is is a good education and encouragement I love it so Lisa yes. um, as uh, can you tell us a story, maybe something just beautiful and a beautiful experience that you've had at your home and just going through this entire journey, something that stands out? Oh, gosh. And put you uh, on the spot. And put me on the spot. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you guys, that's open-ended. Yeah, uh, and you can be as raw as you want to be. All so right, all right. this so, is a risque audience. So this is, yes. Okay, terrific. <laughs> so 
<clears throat> the way we design the house, my mom and dad are upstairs. They have their own suite. They have a den, a bedroom, a bathroom, and their own deck. And then uh, Greg and I have, you know, a little entry, a master bedroom, walk-in closet, bathroom, that kind of thing. And then my grandma's downstairs in her suite. So I'm one of five children. And I was... It was immaculate conception, obviously. There, it, it, there is no way that I ever want to hear about anything that they've ever done. I don't want to no. talk about it. Don't want to hear. I'm one of those kids, you know. So when they moved in, one of the things that I didn't consider was that kind of thing. And I'm laying in bed at night, and I hear, "Oh, Johnny! Oh, Johnny! Ah, ah!" And I'm like, "Oh my oh, god! Wow. Oh my god!" And my immediate thought was, not in my freaking house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm the daughter. And so I bolt through, and I actually had five doors that I had to get through, like levels of door. And I get through the door, and I get to their door, and I open it up, not thinking what I might see, right? Like, I didn't really fully think it through. And <laughs> my dad's on his knees, and my mom's standing up, and he's rubbing her calf. She had a cramp. <laughs> and oh, I'm like, man. oh, okay. I'm like, what are you guys doing? And then I see it. And I, they're like, he's like, she's got a cramp. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Thank God. I think and we all just felt, felt the same sense of relief yeah, that you yeah. just felt because yeah. we were anticipating something really yeah. raw. So, so I went down, got her a banana, you yeah. know, got her some things. We got it all worked out. And they razzed me for the next, I don't know how long. It's like, hey, Johnny, you got the Vi Viagra filled? You know, <laughs> hey, this, hey, that. So lots of things like that constantly happening. Sure. And um, you build a connection with your parents and at least my grandmother. I found out that she um, had played basketball. It was 96 and she had played girls basketball. I didn't even know they had sports for girls back then. She had been in the high school musical as a lead. She had played the violin. All I knew her as a, was a housewife. Yeah. And so there, this entire piece of her was missing because I had not seen that. And it was lovely to be able to hear that and see that. Yes. Interesting. So the relationship kind of changed. Yeah. Yes. And Most some quality definitely. time. That's amazing that you learn new things even after spending that much time together your whole life. Yeah. That's awesome. Lisa, we're so grateful for your uh -huh. time. I, I just I, I've enjoyed following you on social media. You're a monster on LinkedIn and Instagram, Facebook. And so uh, that's a big aspect of our podcast is that what we say on all of our shows is that we don't want the conversation to end as soon as the audio is over. And so we'll make sure to connect with you in our Fantastic. podcast show notes so that people can engage and ask questions. I'm sure after today's show, they're going to hopefully they <laughs> yeah. have some You guys questions. are probably yeah. going to cut a lot of this out. No, no absolutely not. We are not <laughs> cutting <laughs> a single thing. This is life. It's, it's real life. And these yeah. are real stories. And yeah. we really appreciate it. And so we'll connect on our social pages. Feel free to engage with us. Ask, a, ask us questions. And we will engage with you back. Thank you for another great episode of Bridge the Gap Podcast. Josh, thank you so much. Lisa, safe travels. Thank you. And uh, that's uh, a great show. We appreciate you listening. Thank We're you. out.